folks an update for you on the Forest Rover. In short we've made it a bit lighter, hopefully enough to make a bit of difference. Now I still haven't tried it on 6 volt, never got round to it, but if you've watched the first video and if you haven't I'll link to it down below, it was never going to run under its own weight. It doesn't have to climb up and over hills and down dales, up mountains, it is of course four wheel drive. The minimum requirement if you like is to pull its own weight. In making it lighter most of it meant removing strips. Now the original design, <laughs> that's a big word because it was never designed, it was just looked at with photos and a lot of trial and error. But the original sets used were a 10 model multi-model set and a 25 model multi-model set from around about 2014. And there's a lot of strips in those, well by modern standards there are. Hence why the colours largely zinc and yellow as well. You're probably better off looking at the first video, the link's down below in the description, but to see the differences it will help you. Anyway, the first thing that you can see, and you can't see all of the parts that have been removed or swapped, the wing tops are now flexible plates, but there are some strips underneath for strength. The other one, the major one, is in the back. And all those strips that used to be there have gone. And in doing so, of course, there's less nuts and bolts as well. Those are the two major ones that you can see relatively easily. The other one, which I wasn't going to do until I started messing, I thought, hello, let's try this. I'm going to show you that now, as much as I can, and you can't really see it, but bear with me on it. This is the only bit you can really see. Either end you can see this bit, but you see there, there's flexible plates now instead of strips. A lot less in the way of nuts and bolts. Just here, you can just make out the upright there, the vertical strip there. That is now a 2 inch instead of a 2.5 inch strip because there's two of them, one each side. I did have an idea late in the day, you can't see from here, but the seats fit onto sort of a seat box. The, the real thing has a bit of a seat box and underneath that you've got, depending on the models, you've got um, in a Defender you've got the battery on one side and the electronic gubbins on the other side. On earlier models you've got uh, a seat in the middle or a, a box with tools or can have tools in. But it's all made out of strips mainly, as I said before, because of those two sets. And that is quite heavy, so I might remove them in the future. There's a strip being replaced underneath the roof here, just to a narrow strip. Again, saving a little bit of weight, not a lot, but it all mounts up, or rather doesn't. And these two bolts here, there and there, that help to support the cross member, which is here, there's the tow bar. They were the other way around, so the nuts were showing. You can imagine how difficult it would be to tighten those up, although with the strips above it would be possible. But with the flexible plate in there, there's no extra holes now to gain access, so I just turned them round and really, I should have done that from the start. It's so much easier. There's just a reminder of how the drive is to both axles. Very, very simple. Very restrictive on space. Not very good for ground clearance. But I'll go into all that on the original video. This gear here sticks down a bit too much, but it does work, at least with no load on it. Now the rear body was a built-up construction, um, like a lot of things, once you get the one side done, the other side is easy, because you just copy it in reverse and mirror image if you like. But this is held on in total by about eight bolts. The problem was getting it apart when I couldn't remember how I put it together in the first place. So that took a little bit of messing around. You know, it was a couple of hours job really, all in. And it's rather built like the real thing where, like the tub as they call it, they would call this the tub on a standard Land Rover. These are put in and bolted onto the chassis and that's a beauty of the real thing. Not the new rubbish one, but the real thing was very adaptable. I know it doesn't have one, but I'd like to see a spare tyre on the bonnet. I think that'd look cool, but I always think that looks cool. Even though it's not particularly, shall we say, safe if you have an accident and it comes through the windscreen. But there you are. It is, of course, illegal now. That's it, really. And very soon, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll put on a 6-volt battery box and we'll give it a whirl. Mm -hmm.